everyone needs to make profits in the financial markets, but nobody wants to learn how to make profits from the financial markets. Good morning, everyone. I'm your host, Akimali Chibiki, and today in class we'll be talking about pips and lot sizes. Okay. Now, the reason we structure this class is over time, our survey has brought in reports that most persons don't know how to target profits or calculate their profit potential in the financial markets. And that's what we'll be looking at today. If you can hear me, please do drop something in the chat box. If you're excited about the class, do drop something in the chat box also. And yes, please let's do what to use the question section. If you've got questions to ask about the class, and also I'll be dropping polls. So let's do what to respond to the polls also. And before I begin, I can see a lot of people on here with just nine, and I would love to have more persons on the webinar, which is also great. Um, Debbie has been attending my class uh, regularly on point. Thank you very much. Same as Fanla has been attending my classes. Thank you very much. Just to show of appreciation. Soya also has been consistent on my classes. Thank you very much. IODG has been consistent on my classes. Christian and same as Chooks has been consistent on my classes and Shane one up by joining us for the first time. Thank you very much. It means a lot. And yeah, let's dive right into it. So thank you guys for being on this call. It's actually going to be massive and I'll show break down uh, concepts the way I do every single time. So first off, what do we understand as pips? I would want to get everybody's opinion on this. So just drop your opinions in the chat box. What do you understand as pips or what is pips to you? What are pips to you? Okay. Let's start there. Let's start from the pips, pips, pips. Okay. And also do well to get a pen and paper to take notes because we'll be doing uh, just a little bit of math on this webinar. Okay. So yeah, let's start. Let's go ahead. What do you understand as pips? Okay. I'd love to get responses. So price changes, that's brilliant. Price changes, very, very brilliant. Okay, I'd love to get more responses. Okay, thank you for the response. Debbie said movement in price. That's brilliant. That's great. Absolutely brilliant. Um, before we dive right into class, I sent out a poll. Okay, let me send out the poll now. Um, publish the poll. Yes, are you a client of EGM? Yes or no? Because it's 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 in our best interest for you to be our clients so you can continue enjoying webinars like this. We give it to you steady on time every week. So, yes, let's do what to attend to the polls. Are you a client of EGM? Yes or no? And if you're not a client of EGM and you're scared of answering the poll, or you feel you don't need to answer the poll, um, I'll just walk you guys through on how to uh, become a client of EGM to continue enjoying classes like this. So, all you, I'll be sharing my screen now, and we'll dive right into becoming a client of EGM first before we go into the webinar. And also, I'd love to get responses on what do you think pips are. So the first thing is you you calculate or you go to our website, which is eagleglobalmarkets.com. I'll drop the website link in the chat box. So the first thing is when you go to our website, which is eagleglobalmarkets.com, it takes you to our website, and that's the home page of our website. And there's a lot of things on the home, home page. You can see the, the our social media handles and our support line right up above left. You can see the buttons, the home about range of market platform, EGM analytics, education, partnership, and contacts. You can reach out to us on any of this if you're interested in that. Then also you can see I want to trade a one-click demo. You can try the one-click demo. If you're new to the financial market, I want to understand the movements or how price relates in the financial market. Or you can click on, I want to trade if you are an already 
uh, if you are already in the financial markets trading actively, you just want to use uh, Ubi Global Market as your trading platform. You click on I want to trade and it takes you to um, your sign up page. Okay, that's the link in the chat box. Let's do well to click on it if we don't have a trading account. So we can open the trading account. You click on I want to trade or you click on open live, one of that. So this is my trading account and you click on open live. You see, okay, let me just log out. You see this right here, um, don't have an account. You see this page, you fill in your details, then you press next, you fill in the remaining details there and that should get you right on track. Okay, so yes, that is it on how to open an account with us. Let's do all to open an account so we can continue enjoying uh, this type of classes. Okay, great. So let's dive right into what we have today. I'm sharing my screen to the to the slide for today. So um, let me just skip the full screen. Let's share screen and yeah, groups and lot sizes. We've got pips and lot sizes there. So let's present. Now, pips and lot sizes. Pips and lot size. I think this one is the right there. Okay, so yeah, a minute. Okay. Lot size. Great. So pips and lot size. Now, I told everybody to drop their thoughts on what they think what size are and what pips are. And yeah, um, just two persons did, which they were on point. Someone said price changes and someone said movement in price. Well, that's what pips are, okay? Pips are price change or movement in price, okay? The value in which price changes. Now, as you can see, we have pips and lot size, we have the graphics and everything. So let's go to what you'll be learning in this session. So in this session, you'll be learning what pips are, how to calculate pips for different asset class. We'll major on currencies today, okay? We'll major on currencies today. Then we'll talk about what lot size is, relationship between pips and lot size. We'll do a few calculations on that, how to calculate pips for different asset class. Then we'll take a trade and calculate the pips also. Yes, we'll take live trades and calculate the pips for those live trades that we'll be taking. So starting off, what is pips? Okay. Are we all following? If we are following, let's drop something in the chat box. It uh, doesn't seem I'm talking to the air or to my mic below. So if you're following, please drop something in the chat box, an emoji, a guess, just a letter, anything. Just drop it in the chat box so I know that we are all following. Okay, so what is pips? Okay, now a pip is the fourth decimal place in the numeric value of price that expresses the exchange rate between two currencies. Okay, it's the fourth decimal place in the numeric value that expresses the exchange rate between two currencies. Now, it is generally used to measure the small movements in price that occurs in the financial market, in the forex markets, to be precise. Now, the thing is, pips are the most important concepts when it comes to trading, but most people overlook it because of um, the belief it's just how price is moving or the calculation of price. Well, this is one of the major things that gives you a heads up on how much you'll be earning or how much you'll be losing from the financial markets in relative to um, monetary value. Now, it is the cornerstone of everything you'll be getting involved relating to profits or losses in the financial markets. Now, we we'll leave all the technical analysis aside, leave all the price prediction pips. This is what tells you how much you'll be making or how much you'll be losing. And you need to know the calculation. You need to understand how these things is calculated or how these things are calculated. Now, I'll log into my um, Eagle Global Market Trading Platform and I'll show you an example. I'm trying to log in so I can share my screen. I'll show you the one for the cloud trade and the one for the MT4. So, okay, let's see the screen sharing. Let's share this. Okay, cloud trade. Let's share. Brilliant. Now you can see we'll be dealing with currencies alone. So let's go to FX. 
let's check EUR. Now, look at this sell or buy. This aspect of sell or buy. You can see it's flickering every single time. So what I want you to major on is just major on the sell aspect. This one right here. Major on the sell aspect, okay? Now, majoring on the sell aspect would actually, you see that we have 1.54459. And in the definition for pips, we said a pip is the fourth decimal place in the numeric value that expresses the exchange rate between two currencies. Now, fourth decimal place, we have from the decimal to the back, we have 54430. And we said we are starting from the fourth decimal. We'll be considering theory, not the two or the four, okay? Price is flickering. So we'll just be considering theory and ignore everything at the back of three, okay? Because we are dealing with the fourth decimal. That's one, two, three, four. Do we understand? Do we understand? If we do, please drop something in the chat box. Do we understand? So we said it is the fourth decimal, the fourth decimal in price, the fourth decimal in price. So let me see if I can um, do this. Okay. Uh, Okay, good. We all understand. Now, I'll be sharing the screen again so I can just show you guys. Um, just typing it out and showing you guys. Okay, now let's take this example right here. So we have, let me make it more bold. So we have 1.3478 or 34, just a random value 781. Okay. Now, when we're talking about peaks in this instance, we are always starting from or we are considering this value here. We are ignoring this value here. Because the value behind the it is called a pipette and not a peak. 10 pipettes makes a pip, okay? So we are considering pips, not pipettes. Now, knowing that we'll be majoring on the eight, the eight is the fourth decimal value, because if we count right from here, okay, let's count right here. This is one, this is two, this is three, and this is the fourth decimal value. The eight is the fourth decimal value, okay? Knowing that we have the fourth decimal value, that is what we consider pips on. So if we are to say, um, what is the peak? What is the value of the peak right here? We'll say the value is eight because it's the fourth decimal value. Do we understand now? Do we understand now? If we do, drop something in the chat box. And if you don't, I will do what to take it off on the top again. Do we understand now? I'd love to get responses. Do we understand now? Okay, brilliant. I'm waiting for Ulu Shedun to respond actually because he said he didn't understand the other time. So I'm waiting for him to respond. Well, since majority are, I very much want to consider his response also. Um, okay, okay, okay. So now that we understand this, we can now move on to, okay, he said he doesn't still understand. Okay. Um, Let's take it my way. So, Olusha, look at this. Yesterday, you went to the supermarket and they said, um, yesterday you went to the, the to the supermarket and they said you wanted to buy a can of drinks, okay? A pack of canned drinks, okay? A pack. Come a minute. A pack of canned drinks okay now yesterday when you went to the store it was sold for um this is just hypothetical values okay not real values i'm just hypothetical values okay 
it was sold for one fifty dollar. Okay, it was sold for one fifty dollar. One fifty dollars. Okay, it was sold for one fifty dollars, and you went back there the second day to buy the same pack of canned drinks. Okay, so sorry, let me just delete that. So the same pack of canned drinks again. You wanted to buy them again. Same pack of canned drinks. And when you got there today, they said it was sold for, it is now being sold for um, $200. Okay, so no, don't let me use $200. Let me use uh, a small value or a smaller value. Let's say it was sold for $161. Okay, $161. Now, check Listen closely, okay? Listen closely. We Yesterday, we bought this for $150, and today, we are about to buy it for $161. What is the peak value there? The peak value is what? Looking at it, the peak value is what? One, right? The peak value. For price to change, it needs $1 to change, right? For price to change, it needs $1 to change. Okay, now knowing that it needs one dollar to change, we understand that a pip is one. Okay, so we say a pip, a pip is one. Now that price changed from one fifty dollars to one sixty one dollars, we said the drinks has increased in price by what eleven pips. We said the drink has increased in price by what 11 pips brilliant now do you understand the concept of pips pips is the smallest value in which price can change its value okay the smallest price or the smallest change in price okay the smallest change is one so when we add one in 11 places to 150 it turns to 161. do you understand now You, do you understand now? Okay, yes, brilliant. Now, everybody on the call, do you understand now with this example? Like with this life example of you going to the store, buying a can of drink for $150 yesterday, and today you went back there and they said it's $161. You understand that before the price increased, they had to add one to it, but now the price increased by 11, so they add 11 pips to it. Do we understand now? I'd love to get responses. Do we all understand now? Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. So now that we understand this, this is just an hypothetical example. So let's go back to price itself. Now, remember we said, when we were talking about the kind of drinks, we had three values, like we had three digits. Then we said, we calculate the change in price from the last digit. Now, if we are talking about Forex, the financial markets now, Forex in this instance, okay? And I said we always have 1.43, just some random values, okay? But in this instance, we have five decimals behind, okay? One, two, three, four, five. We have five, five digits behind after the decimal points. And we said PIPS is always calculated from the fourth decimal number counting from the front to the back we would have what one two three and four so one peep if we are to change by one peep we are going to start from what the number seven right we're going to start from the what the number seven right brilliant that means four let's take for instance now that this is AUD USD price. Hypothetical example, okay? Hypothetical example. If we say, for instance, this is AUD USD price. If AUD goes to 1.3938, we said it has increased by what? How many pips? It has increased by how many pips? 
it has increased by how many pips? Can anybody tell me? Remember, we were at 1.3937 before. Ignore the one behind. Always, it has increased by one pip, right? One pip, exactly. That's the thing. Now, for price to increase, it needs to go by a pip. For price to decrease, it needs to be deducted or reduced by a pip. Do we all understand what a pip is now? Brilliant. Now, I'll stop sharing this screen and let's go back to our slide. Now, on the slide, I'll read this through again. We said a pip is the fourth decimal place in the numeric value that expresses the exchange rate between what? that expresses the exchange rate between two currencies okay it is used for measuring the small as you can see the small movements in price that occur in the financial markets the forex market pips are the most important concept to understand as traders in the financial market it is the cornerstone of all that we will get involved in, in the financial markets now look at this right here let me increase this to a good size so we can all see it now can we all see this we have 1.32456 1.32456 now see the same thing i said we had five values one two three four five now look at what was said to the fifth value we said 0 0.6 pips that's a pipette remember i gave that example when i was writing on the whiteboard right I give the example that the fifth digits behind the decimals is always what a pipette and that's the same thing that's why you have 0 0.6 pips then you see we started making mention of co complete numbers from the five we said five pips 40 pips 200 pips 3000 pips and what 10000 pips that's just the typical approach to what Pips are. Do we all understand now? I'm trying to make this as simple as it should be. Okay. So, do we all understand now what pips are? Okay, good. Okay. So, have we all got our pen and paper now? Because we do a quick math on pips. A quick math on pips. A quick math on pips. Now, let's start with USD card, okay? USD card. Now, we have three examples to work on. I'll do two, and everybody on the call will do one, okay? Now, listen to this closely. We said, USD card is trading at 1.26640. So, let us write that down. 1.2660. 1.2660. Okay, 26640. 1.26640. Let's put that somewhere. Then it said when you execute a long position on it, you executed a long, that means you are buying. Okay, you bought the USD card. And over the couple of days, price moved up. Okay, price moved up to 1.29640. So let's write 1.29640 down. 1.29640. How many pips has it moved to the upside? I want everybody to pay close attention. Okay. I want everybody to pay close attention. So we said USD card was trading at 1.2640. Let me just share where I'm doing the math, the calculation. Okay, Debbie, Debbie, take it slow. Okay, I know you are hyped and want to really participate in the class. You are correct with your calculations, but you know not everybody can calculate it. So let's take it a step at a time so everybody can. Can, can can understand how we did the calculations okay wow seems everybody knows how to calculate pips <laughs> yeah yeah okay i know everybody 
understand scripts they know how to go about it but there are other people on this call that don't know how to calculate it okay so let's give them time to learn it now this is the first value where usd card was trading at and remember we said we bought we went what long we bought so let's say sorry, let's say we bought here yeah, this was one point two six six four zero then this was where it is currently at now it's currently at 1.29640 okay now we said how many pips has it moved how many pips has it moved to do this it's very very simple remember we were at a lower price before we went to a higher price right we were at the lower price before we went to a higher price yes or no we were at a lower price before we went to a higher price yes or no i want everybody to give a response in the chat box brilliant yes yes brilliant that's amazing i'm loving the energy on this call now looking at it what do we need to do to calculate how many pips it has moved? We need to subtract where we bought price from, from the current price where USD card is. So we bought USD card at 1.26640. We want to know how many pips we have. We'll be subtracting it from its current price. Do you understand? Do you understand what I said? We have to subtract where we bought USD card from the current price it's easy okay we have to subtract the first price of usd card from the current price it is in okay now let's see how we do that all we just need to do is this is the current price we put the current price somewhere we put it here we say 1.29640 sorry 640 minus 1.26670 do we understand do we understand do we understand we subtract the old price from the new price let's put it that way we subtract the old price from the new price Oh, four. I'm very, very sorry. It was a mistake. It was a mistake. Uh, typo. I'm sorry. Yeah, four. Sorry about that. Okay. Now, do we understand? Do we understand the reason we'll be subtracting? We said because it has moved away from that price. It has moved away from that price. Do we understand? If we do drop something in the chat box before I proceed. So now, if we do the math to this, we say um, equal to zero from zero is zero. Four from four is also zero. Six from six is zero. Then nine from six is three. Two from two is zero. And one from one is zero. So zero point zero point zero 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 point zero three zero 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 okay now remember we said we are calculating from the fourth value pips is from the fourth value so we're considering the zero not the last zero considering this zero and not this last zero so if we bring this out we will we'll say we have zero point zero three hundred now knowing that we are considering the pit value from forward to behind or behind to forward any way you want it we can now say that we have what finally we can consider we have what 300 pips do we all understand do we all understand glory you made a mistake now do you understand properly because you you sent in a wrong answer actually 
Okay, brilliant. Do you understand? Do we all understand how to calculate pips now? I think we all do, okay? Yes. I did not eliminate 0 0.3. I eliminated 0, 0.0 because I said, if you actually joined us earlier from the class, we, we any zero, we just... Zero in the front, we ignore. Zero at the fifth figure, we ignore. Now, the reason I ignored the zero, I eliminated the zero, is very simple. We are calculating from the fourth decimal, from the fourth decimal, from the fourth decimal. Very simple. The fourth decimal is four, so I need to consider the zero from this four, the zero the four gives us and ignore the 50 zero because I said, we are calculating pips not pipettes, okay? Eliminating the last zero, we have 0 0.00300. And remember, we are calculating pips. The values in the front are zero. We don't need to consider them because we are calculating pips. Do you understand now, Kenneth? Brilliant. Um, has anybody got any question before we proceed? You're welcome. You're welcome. Has anybody got any question before we proceed? Any questions before we proceed? So I should ride along, right? Okay. So let's go to our second um, example. We'll be selling in this second example. So I need everybody to keep an open mind. I need everybody to keep an open mind. I hope you noticed how we calculated the buying scenario which is we went long. Now, ERGBP. We have it that ERGBP current market price is 0 0.86630, zero, okay? So ERGBP current price is 0 0.866, uh, let me look at that value, 0 0.86630, zero, zero, okay? This is the current price. And we said we shorted it and the new market value is 0 0.83210. Okay, 0 0.83210. 0 0.83210. Okay, 0 0.83210. Now, how many pips did it fall? How many pips did it fall? Now, you can do it two ways. Okay? You can do it two ways. We can take, we can say the first price moved in our, the, the first thing you need to understand is price moved in the anticipated direction. Price moved in the anticipated direction. We went short, Kelechi, Yes, I know you know how to calculate pips, but please and please let, let everybody on the call learn, okay? Because not everybody knows how to calculate pips. And yes, you're correct with your value, but let's everybody learn, okay? Okay, thank you very much. And yeah, let's dive right into it. So let me share. Let me share where we'll be doing the calculation, the whiteboard for the calculation and Sure. Okay. So, um, we said this is the first value, zero point eight six six three zero, and this is the second value, zero point eight three two one zero. What do we need to do? We need to subtract the new value from the old value. Remember, whatever we do for a long position, we do the reverse for a short position. Remember, we subtracted the old value from the new value. And when we bought USD card, but now we'll be subtracting the new value from the old value because of we shorted ER card. So in this scenario now, what we'll have is very simple. We'll have 0 0.86630 minus 0, 0 0.83210. Then we'll have this as our value. So if we take it from the front or to the back, anyhow we want to, 
um, subtract by base, like subtracting from the back. So we have zero first, then three from one will give us two, then six from two will give us four, then, sorry, zero from zero will give us zero, three from one will give us two, six from three will give us four, then six from six from three will give us three, and eight from eight will give us zero, then we have zero point, right? Do we all understand how we got 0 0.3420? Do we all understand how we got 0 0.3420? 0 0.03420. Do we understand how we got 0 0.03420? If we do, drop something in the chat box. And if you don't understand, let me know so I can go over it again. Okay, brilliant. I need more responses, just two persons or three persons since. Um, Kilichi already confirmed that it's correct. Kilichi has been super active on my classes, like very, very active on my classes. Okay, brilliant. Now, what do we need to do? Remember, we are calculating what pips. Okay, we are calculating pips. All we need to do is what? Disallow these zeros in the front. We are not considering them. So we just don't consider them and we don't consider the last zero because it's the fifth value. So we understand that we have three, four, two pips. That means that means ERGBP fell 342 pips. Now, on the norms, if you see this, you just say ERGBP fell 342 pips. Yeah, it was good and all. But if you want to take another approach towards it, let me show you. If you want to take another approach towards it. Okay, a minute. Um, if you want to take another approach towards it to know that you are on the right track or to know what direction, you could just see this. And if you show somebody this peak value, the person would just believe possibly you bought. Okay, you bought because the, the, the peak value is positive. If you want to do it another way, you could just say the new value from the old value. The new value from the old value. So you will get the same thing, but you will get a negative value. What the negative value is just telling you is that you went short on it. You shorted ERG. So you have minus 0 0.03420. Simple. So you know your 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 final value is minus three four three four two bits. So this actually clarifies the fact that you shorted an ERGBP reduced by minus three four two pips, three hundred and forty two pips. So initially, what this is telling you or telling anybody that sees this value is that okay. The person went short on it and it moved in its value. That means ERGBP went negative by 342 pips, but you are in profits by 342 pips. Do we all understand now? Do we all understand now? If we do, let's drop something in the chat box. Thank you. If we don't understand, let's drop something in the chat box. Thank you. Oh, my screen is not. Do we all understand? Did you see my screen when I was calculating it? Were you able to see my screen when I was calculating it? Okay, I thought I thought you were not able to see my screen when I was calculating it. Okay, so. Now that we all understand how to calculate pips for a buying scenario and a selling scenario, all I'll need for you to do is just the practice, okay? The practice. Now remember, nobody's wrong, nobody's right. Just send in your calculations right now once I just give the question. So I'll make corrections also if anybody feels it or gets it wrong. Now let's calculate for AUD USD. Now it's said that if AUD USD is at a price of 
0.69230. Let me type that out for everybody in the chat box. If AED is at a price of zero, but let me just send in a question. It's better. Let me just send in a question to the chat box and I'll read it out aloud so everybody can hear also. So if AED USD is at a price of 0 0.69230, and then we decided to buy, which is go long on it. After two hours, it moved 0 0.69730. What amount of pips did it move? Okay. What amount of pips did it move? What amount of pips did it move? What amount of pips did it move? Yeah, I just expect everybody to, 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 to send in the answers. So... Do well to send in your answers. I'm expecting your answers. Thank you. So, yeah, I love the fact that everybody's dropping their answers. So, okay. Yeah, let's do well to send in the answers. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, please do send in your answers. Send in your answers so I can know you're being proactive on the call. Thank you. Okay, okay, okay. Yes. So I got um one, two, three, four, five, six. I've got six persons who drop their answers, and Debbie, um, Blessing, Chips, Chilichi, Ifunaya, and Kenneth, they all got it, but Olusha don't made a little bit of mistake. Okay, so I'll take the question and solve it. Okay, so everybody can see the way I'll solve it and we can all learn from it. So, I want everybody to pay close attention. We said we have AUD USD at the price of this. I'll type out the price now from text. AD was at this price. Then, after two hours, it moved to this price. And it was stated that we bought AUD USD. So this was the old price, and this is the new price. What do we need to do? All we need to do is what? subtract. We need to subtract the old price from the new price. If we subtract the old price from the new price, our answer would be. Coming, let me just send in our answers. Would be zero from zero, that would be zero, three from three would also be zero, seven, two from seven would be five, then nine from nine would be zero, six from six would be zero, then zero point. Right? What's this telling us? This is telling us that price moved. 50 pips price moved 50 pips so how did we know that price moved 50 pips very very simple very very simple all we need to do is what ignore the what the fifth value okay we need to ignore the fifth value so when we ignore the fifth value we have 0 0.0050 and what do we need to do the zeros in the front are not relevant we ignore them also we are left with five zero. And this is how we got 50 pips as the price movement for AUD USD. Do we all understand now? Do we all understand now? Do we all understand how it was gotten as 50 pips? Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. So now that we all understand how it was gotten, Let's go back to our slide. Um, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So, we all understood how this was gotten. Now, let's go to our slide. If you noticed, in this slide, we only talked about USD, EUR, GBP, AUD, CAD. 
we didn't talk about gpy because of they have a special or a different approach of calculating their pips now for jpy pairs eg usd jpy the pip calculation starts from the second decimal place digit okay start from the second decimal place digit if you go to your mt4 or your cloud tree which i'll show you soon and go to your quotes and you view the jpy pairs you have on your watch list you notice that it's not up to four decimals like the other pairs we've done the examples on the previous slide so let me show you that before we go to calculating um the pips for gpy now there are two questions on gpy okay but i'll do one then I, you guys will do the second one for me to know that you understand now see jpy right here er jpy for instance we have 129.44 last values flickering you notice that it's just three decimals behind the the, the 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 decimal value or the decimal point okay now with that being said or that scene let's go to the questions let's go to the questions so a quick math on pips we said usd jpy is currently at 109.030 and we bought it after several hours of waiting price moved to 109.690 how many pips has it moved now to cut the process or make the process very very short let me just copy the values out and i will copy the values out and you'll see something when i show the values Okay, so I'm copying the values out. And that's the last one right there. Okay, good. So, sharing where we we'll do the calculations. Can we see the screen now? Now, you notice it was three values behind the decimal, but I have two values. I decided to ignore them before I do my calculations. So I don't stress myself on ignoring them in the end. Do you understand? Like I decided to ignore them because they are not of any value to me because they are the pipettes, okay? They are the pipettes and we're not considering pipettes. We are considering real price movements. Do we understand now? We are considering real price movements. We're not considering pipettes. Do we understand? Okay, good. We do understand. So, yeah, let's dive right into the calculation. So, we bought, okay, all we need to do is subtract old price from new price. Okay, so doing the math, we would have this. Okay, we would have this as our value. So, nine, three from nine will give us six. Six from zero would give us six. Point nine from nine would be zero. Zero from zero, zero, and one from one, zero. And this is our answer. So, what do we do? We do, we, we, we do not consider the... The zeros in the front okay then we say we have what 66 pips do we understand we say we have 66 pips as our answer great okay now that everybody understands now everybody will be doing the second calculation for jpy i'm sharing the screen and i'll drop the question in the chat box 
Now it says CHFJPY is at the current price of 110.620, and we shorted it, then it moved to 109.320. How many pips did it move? Now, I want my answer in negative, okay? I want my answer in negative. Although I know I shot it, but I want my answer in negative. So the question is in the chat box. Let's do what to solve it. It says CHF JPY at the current price of 110.620. And we shorted it, then makes a move to 109.320. How many pips did it move? How many pips did it move? I'm waiting for everybody's answer. So let's do well to solve it. So anybody got the answer yet? Has anybody got the answer yet? Okay, one person dropped the answer. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay, let's continue dropping our answers. Let's continue dropping our answers. Everybody's dropping the same answer. Wow. Um, everybody's dropping the same answer. I'm waiting for Chuck's answer. And okay, Kelechi dropped his answer. Brilliant. Okay, I this tricks on the goal because I'm expecting this answer also. Wow, everybody dropped literally one point, one point, one point, one point. Some people dropped one thirty, or one person dropped one thirty, and one person dropped. Wow, tricks, even tricks also. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, you guys, thanks for the answer, but. Only Kelechi got it correct, okay? Only Kelechi got it correct. How? I'll explain, okay? Don't feel bad at all. You, you, at least you put in effort. You put in effort and you did what you, you, you knew how to do, okay? So I'll break it down how the answer is one third. So follow closely. Follow closely so you don't make any mistakes again. I'll be sharing where we'll be doing the calculations. So... Yeah, we're doing the calculations right there. Delete. So we said CHF JPY at the current price of 110.620. One, I need to place that value somewhere right here. So we've got the first value. Now, it said it dropped. That means it dropped to 109.320. Okay? So, I'll do it two ways or three ways also so everybody can see this. Now, very simple. We can subtract the old price from the new price if we want to get the positive value because of we know we went short on CHF GPY. So, I know this is just like the positive pip value I'm in. Zero from zero would be zero, okay? Zero from zero would be zero, okay? So, a minute, let me just get the text to zero from zero would be zero, two from two would be zero, six from three, three from six would be three. Point zero from nine, not possible. We can borrow one from front, so ten, nine from ten would be one. Then zero from zero would be zero, and one from one would be zero. So we have one point zero zero one point three zero zero. Okay. Now, what do we do? Very simple. Very very simple. We ignore the zeros in the front. One point three. We say we are calculating from the second decimal. We add zero. Then we ignore the last zero. But remember, remember that this can't be one point three zero pips. Not possible. Because we said 
The second decimal is what we count our pips from. And remember, let me take you back to this area right here. Let me take you back to this area right here. Back to what we discussed earlier. So everybody can understand this now. Let's take you back to this. Okay. So remember we said 1.32456. 0 0.6 pips, 5 pips, 40 pips, 200 pips, 3,000 pips, 10,000 pips. Now, remember this is for general pairs, not JPY pairs. Now, let's go to, I'll, I'll draw out a diagram now for JPY pairs so you can see JPY pairs. So everybody can see what JPY pairs relates to. Yes, the last zero is not significant. Okay, now this is it. Remember, we have only three values on what JPY. So on JPY pairs, so let's say one, two, three point two, three, one. Okay, two, three, one. Now, listen closely. This is a pipette. This is a peak. This would be 10 pips. I'm just saying 10 pips in terms of 100 tens and units. This will be 100 pips. This will be 1,000 pips. And this will be 10,000 pips. Do you understand now? Do you understand now? So this is a pipette. This will be like units. Sorry, like lesser than a unit. That's what the one is. Then the theory will be units. Then this will be 10. Then this will be 100. This will be 1,000. And this will be 10,000. Do we understand now? Do we understand now? Simple math. Do we all understand now? If you do understand, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. I'd love to get more responses. Do we all understand now? Okay, great. Now that we know that theory is this right here is. 100 is this still 1.30 pips anymore no it will change to what 130 pips that's 130 pips how simple and easy it is or if you just say times 100 you just say 1.30 times 100 and you get the value do we all understand now? Yes or no? Do we all understand now? Do we all understand now? Okay, good. Now that we understand how to calculate pips for normal pairs and JPY pairs, we can now move on to the next thing on our list, which is position sizing or position size. popularly called lot size, okay? So, lot size can be called position size, depends on how you want to call it, okay? Now, lot size is the amount or quantity of a trade that you bought or sold, okay? Lot size is the amount or quantity of a trade that you bought or sold. It's sometimes called your position size or trade size, like I have said. Now, in the Forex market, Currencies are not just bought and sold single-handedly, or like you just buy one, one piece of currency and you go and you, you want to make a, a lot of money from it. They are bought and sold in facts called lot sizes. That is what makes the gain appreciable. If not, your profit in first would, like, would, be, would have been dollar $0.00001, very small in value, and you don't, nobody wants to make that small money. We all want to make big money or something like that. But the reason you have an appreciable gain is because of you bought the currencies in box or packs in form of what lot sizes. Do we all understand now? Do we all understand now? So the reason your profits are so appreciable in the forex market is because you bought the pairs in lot sizes. Do we understand now? Do we all understand now? I'd love to get more responses.
Okay, great, great. So, now let me break down lot size or what lot size mean in normal human terms. If you remember, when we talked about terminologies in Forex, I used, I explained this scenario using a cabbage seller, right? Now, let's use something we are all familiar with, clothes. Now, let's say you go to Zara to get a dress for your wife, or, your, or you went to Louis Vuitton to get a suit or a fancy, a fancy suit for your husband. Very simple. If you go to Zara or Louis Vuitton, they show you a, 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 a how would I put it, a, a, a list of all their goods, right? And you could see possibly on the list of goods, it's it comes in packages. Now you could see a package of one fifty thousand, a package of of um a hundred thousand and a package of fifty thousand. Let's put it that way. So we have three packages on the on on the on the list of goods, and one it comes in this price value: one fifty thousand, hundred thousand, and fifty thousand. So in the one fifty thousand, we get a, a, a Louis Vuitton belt, a Louis Vuitton perfume, a Louis Vuitton suit, and a Louis Vuitton shirt. Okay. Then in the hundred thousand, you get a Louis Vuitton belt, a Louis Vuitton suit and a perfume then in the fifty thousand, you get a louis vuitton shirt a louis vuitton belt a louis vuitton trouser and a perfume now applying just common sense to this you would understand that one is more expensive than one one is more expensive than one right yes or no yes or no and also to the to the to the to the females or to the ladies your husband went to the store and he went to zara and store uh the packages also a fancy red dress a fancy white dress a zara perfume a zara headgear things like that and it comes in packages now you understand that over time let's now say you're not buying it for your husband or your wife or you want to resell it the person that bought the highest package which is the 150,000 if he wants to resell there's a tendency that he would make more money than the person that bought the 100,000 around right yes or no yes or no you want to resell there's a tendency that you get somebody who will pay you higher than you bought it right and also the other person about the hundred thousand naira package has a tendency that there's somebody that will pay higher same as applies to the person that bought the fifty thousand package right now that's the concept of lot size the hundred and fifty thousand package is the standard lot size the hundred thousand package is the mini lot size and the fifty thousand package is the micro lot size if you look at my screen you see um shopping bags like shopping bags you see the green one which is the hundred thousand package the second one is the, the the sorry the first one is the one fifty thousand package the second one is the hundred thousand package and the next one is the fifty thousand package you would see it right and that is what or that's how we relate it to the financial market let's use the the example of cabbages somebody bought three trucks of three trucks filled with cabbages somebody bought two trucks filled with cabbages and somebody bought one truck filled with cabbages who will make the most money who will make the most money like in what orders will they make money like what order will they make money the orders they will make money the one with the 50 150 or the one with the three trucks would make a lot of profits the one with the hundred with the two trucks would make Profits also, but not as much as the one with the three trucks. Then the one with the one truck also would make more profits, but not the one, or no, but not as much as the one who has two trucks or three trucks. Same concept applies to the financial markets. When you have, or when you buy a contract, or you open a position on a currency pair, you open a position on a currency pair, and you use one standard lot 
you make what ten dollar per pip movement. So if price goes one pip, you make ten dollar. If price goes ten pips, you make hundred dollar. You see how easy it is to make money in the financial markets. If you use two, if you use a mini lot size, if price goes one pip, you make one dollar. If price goes two pips, you make two dollar. If price goes ten pips, you make what? Ten dollar. If you use a micro lot size, if price goes one pip, you make one cent. If price goes two pips, you make two cents. If price goes ten pips, you make one dollar. Do you see how the profit margin is different? Do you understand how the profit margin is different now? When you trade using lot sizes, do you do you see how different it is now? Do you see how different it is now? Yes or no? Okay, good. Now that is the concept of lot size. Now, how do you relate lot size to pips? It's very, very simple. Know the right lot size to use in a trade. Know the right lot size to use in a trade. They like lot size that will give you profits. That will give you profits. Know how to use them in a trade. Now, if I wanted to buy um AED USD, and I know that AED USD is not my pair. But it has a good potential of moving. I'll be using the mini lot size. That means per pip, I want to make one dollar. I might be aiming for 20 pips. That means if AUD USD moves 20 pips in my way, I'll be making what? Quick $20. Do we now understand how the concept of lot size and pips work? Yes or no? Okay, good. So that will be the end of our session today. But before I go, I'll be I'm open to questions based on what we've discussed and also outside of what we discussed. Okay, so yes, keep your questions coming in. And also before you go, when you want to apply the concept of pips and lot size, also apply the right risk management to it. Okay also apply the right risk management to it because when you understand how to manage your risk you have better chances of making more in the financial markets and losing less in the financial markets okay so before we go i'm open to questions let's ask questions and also i'll be sending in a poll right now I'm sending in a, a poll right now, so please let's do what to respond to the poll. Thank you. I'm, I'm still waiting for questions also. The minimum lot size is 0 0.01, okay? That's for the MC4, but for our cloud trade, is 50. It's 50 because the Naira platform, so the minimum we can trade is 50 Naira on our Naira platform. But on the MT4, the minimum is 1, 0 0.01, okay? 0.01 that's the minimum you can trade which is 0.01 and that's the micro lot size i'll share my thoughts on risk management very very soon very very soon very very soon we'll have a class on risk management and it's going to be mind-blowing it's going to be massive because it's going to put you in the right mindset on how to trade and apply the right risk management when trading okay so I sent in a poll, please do respond to it. And yes, you can reach out to me on WhatsApp. Um, if you've got questions about the financial markets, you can reach out to me on WhatsApp. I'll drop my WhatsApp number in the chat box. So you can reach out to me on WhatsApp. Okay? So everybody can reach out to me on WhatsApp that way.
Okay, so that's my WhatsApp number in the chat box. You can reach out to me anytime. And please let's do well to respond to the poll. Thank you. Let's do well to respond to the poll. I'm sending you an error post right now. I'm waiting for more responses on the webinar. So tell me, how has your trading been before we, we, we end the session, okay? How has trading been for you so far? How have you been doing in the markets? Let me know. Ask your questions. Ask your questions. Let me know how trading has been so far for you. If you'll be funding your trading account after this webinar, just drop a message to me on WhatsApp. I, I'm available to like walk you through let you know the process of funding and also possibly i'll give you a one-on-one -on -one personal zoom session to get you right on track to get you started on track so yes how has trading been for you since you've been trading how has it been are you seeing progress since you've been attending the classes have you been seeing progress have you been applying the things we learned because yeah I, I, got, I get comments a lot in my whatsapp that um the things we discuss on the webinar you can see them better on the chart to see how they play out, how it reacts and all. That's just the thing. Just apply these concepts regularly to the chart and you should see yourself doing quite well or amazingly well in the financial markets. It's literally not difficult to see all the price action we've been talking about, projections, trend lines, how to trade them. You can see them every single part on your chart. So yes, I promise we'll be taking trades on the webinar i almost forgot yeah let's take trades okay let's take trades so i've got a few things analyzed down a few trades actually and yeah let me check i'm looking at dxy the dollar index a short it has already started um so i can go to the one hour for an entry that's if i would get any uh, i might not get any entry though Okay, so I just expect it to feel this uh, fair value gap right here on the daily before we go back up. So I'm more interested in the buy though. I don't like trading against the trend because it's an uptrend already. Market structure broke. I explained the concept of market structure to you guys. So market structure broke here. So we are already in an uptrend. All I need to see is price come back to the daily order block, feel the fair value gap before I buy. Um, ADUSD, I think I already bought. Yeah, I already bought. Yeah, I already bought. I bought right here. My stop loss was like five pips or so. My target is this area right here, the daily order block, or the fill of the fair value gap before I go down. Um, ERUSD, long also. I went long already on it. But I could get a re-entry if I check the 15 minutes time frame. Okay, I could buy again though. I could buy again. And launch. Let me launch my cloud trade. And yeah, I will just buy on cloud trade platform. So let me just share my screen when I'm buying. So everybody can see I'm buying on a real account. So um, share screen and cloud trade. We are USD my alert on this triggered i think i saw an alert triggered already so erusd was trained. i'm being conservative because that already moved so i see no reason for me to use a big lot size so i just set that and i have to refine my stop loss the target is still very very wide so I can keep my stop loss right below here, but that would be too much. That would be around like a lot of pips. That would be 50 pips. That's too much for me. 47 pips. Um, wow. Okay, I will refine it to 60 pips instead to give price space to bit because this is an order block right here. Oh, you can't see my chart. Wow. But let me just set my stop loss to 60 pips. 
um, 16. That way I can trial my take profit. So I won't be setting take profit. I'll keep it an open float back. Okay, submit. Yeah, I'll keep it an open float. So that should do the trick. Now, yeah, let's go back and see the charts. Okay, I map my daily order blocks by looking at the trend. Okay, I just look at the trend and if it's a positive order block, that's a bullish order block, it's, it's going to be a bearish candle, okay? A bearish candle, a bearish candle. Okay, let's, this is a bullish order block right here. So this bearish candle before an impulsive move to the upside was, my own. I caught this buy also right here, this buy right here, I caught the buy also, because it came to this order block right here. And very, very simple though, very, very simple. Now, NZD USD also, I'm on a buy, but we're buying again. So there's a fair value gap and there's an order block on the daily. So on the one hour time frame, we had this indecision candle. Right? And so that's like tendencies uh, price. We might still come back into this area, right? And so if I could still buy and set my stop loss a few pips below this. So how many people would that be? Let me buy first. Let me stop sharing and let me share my screen. We are buying, so um, this is not a trade signal, okay? It's not a trade signal, it's just me airing my own view about price, okay? You don't take the trades, you can lose money, okay? Not financial advice, just trying to create clarity, not financial advice at all. NJD, NJD, USD. Buy. I'm trying to be as conservative as I can because price has already moved, so I don't need to open crazy lot size. So let's go and see the, the stop loss calculation. Um, stop loss calculation should be. Yeah, it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. Fun your trading accounts and start trading because there's a lot of money to be made. So I entered around here and let's see my stop loss will be okay, 20 pips. Let's extend it to 20 pips because of fair value gap. So 20 pips is good. This, this is a fair value gap right here. So you might see it get filled. So 20 pips stop loss is not that bad on NZD USD. So um, let me share my screen where well, I'm setting the stop loss so you can see. Um, NZD USD, no, my cloud trade. So share and yeah, 20 pips. Now, the reason I love the cloud trade platform is because of if I can't cram the value for my price where my stop loss will be, I could just cram the value for the pips. So 20 pips is very easy to type, I just type it points away and I just put it down there. So we are already running in, we're flipping between profit and loss, but we we'll get into profit soon. And yes, we're in profit, just little drops. My take profit is wide, so that's why I keep it at an open float. Please don't do an open float. Always set a stop loss and a take profit every single time. Okay, so yeah, that's it. We've taken trades on the platform, and you can see how. The fair value gap is an area where price trades inefficiently. Okay, we're talking about all of this days, so no need to rush it. But I hope you get the picture of. Yeah, you just need to fund your trading account and start trading with a small lot size. That is what he meant by a micro funding level with just five k. Okay, so we've come to the webinar, the end of the webinar, and I hope you you learned eighteen or two. So I dropped my WhatsApp number in the chat box if you'll be funding your account. Do message me so I can walk you through, send you the bank details and all to make the payments. And also up on a one-on-one -on -one Zoom session with you. That's if you'll be funding. And also if you won't be funding, just send me a message, send your questions. I will do what to reply immediately. So, yeah. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much. And we've come to the end of this webinar. See you in the next webinar. And remember, risk management is key. Always learn to manage your risk on trades. Use your stop loss always. Let your stop loss do the worrying instead of you doing the worrying so you can actually be comfortable with trades you take. We'll meet on um, Thursday for our next class. We're talking about um, something better than
pills and lot sizes more of technical analysis. So do well to come prepared. Thank you very much.